What's up, guys? We are back. Fitness Profit Multiplier, Anthony and Jimmy. Today, we're going to be talking about how to hire employees that are going to go to the moon and back for you and not hiring the employees that need a break every two hours. And you guys know what I'm talking about. We've all been there. We've all done that. We've all hired bad hires. So how do you hire good hires and people that are actually going to be good culture fits to your community, to your business that we hire these people and they're kind of built with batteries included, so to say, and they're often running and making you money and giving you more and more freedom, which is very, very important. But before we get into that, I want to let you guys know that we are taking on a handful of new clients one-on-one -on -one to work with us. So if you're interested in exploding your business and getting to that seven-figure run rate, just make sure you click that link below and book yourself a diagnosis call with us so we can go over these things in more detail. But Jimmy, let's talk about those bad trainers for a second. The ones that need a break every two hours, the ones that they get burnt out and they're like very soft. Like those, those are the ones, I mean, we've all had bad hires. We've all done it. Yeah. That's tough. Where do those people come from? Right. And how do you, you know, what goes on with them? Well, to put a caveat on what we're going to share with you, no matter the source of the employee, um, there's going to be people that have personality differences that just don't align with your business mission. They're just going to exist in any avenue, whether you get them through an online service, whether you pay a headhunter, I don't know why you do that for a gym, but um, you know, it's, they come from an internship program. They come from, you know, your member base, whatever it may be, there's still going to be people that um, don't fit the bill. And Anthony and I have both had bad trainers. I mean, he, he had a trainer that, you know, called in sick 15 minutes after they were supposed to be on shift. Um, I've had the toilet paper bandit. So, you know, it's, it's one of these things where you, you find these people here and there. And speaking of a client, a trainer that needs a break every two hours, I had a trainer like that in my facility um, who worked a five hour shift and would eat three full Tupperware microwaved meals during that five hour shift and go to the bathroom four times in five hours. And, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where you have to identify these things as they come in, but there's different sources of employee generation, employee leads that are going to be better than others. And that's what we gotta, we gotta look at. Where are they? How do we find them, right? So, um, Anthony, where's the first place that you find these individuals? The bad ones or the good ones? Because <laughs> <laughs> the bad ones, I'll tell you, the bad ones, I've gotten a lot of bad ones. And I, I know I shouldn't blanket this, but I've gotten a lot of bad, I didn't hire anybody from there, but I've gotten a lot of bad people from Indeed. A lot of bad ones. I don't know what it is. Indeed's like Facebook leads. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying Indeed's bad. You can find good people from Indeed, but I've just not had good experience with Indeed. So I don't yeah. use Indeed. Um, okay. My best, 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 where I get the cream of the crop, the best is through my database. Honestly, that's the best place I've ever gotten clients from. I look within, I look with, uh, I'm sorry, trainers. I look within my clients and I see who really has taken a liking to training. And you never know, you know, you have clients who are very, very successful. And if you can get them to become trainers, all the more power to you, you know, like, because they've been through the process before. They understand what it takes to transform their body in your system. So more than likely, and they like to pass that forward. So mm -hmm. for me, I always look within first. That's the first thing I do. And that's how I usually get the best employees, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And not that Indeed doesn't work entirely, but you're going to get, you know, people that apply for the job that are minimally skilled and don't have the, you know, the, the specific vision, mission, fit for you from Indeed is going to be harder, right? From Indeed, you're going to get more no-shows for interviews. You're going to get these things, right? And just like we don't just 
get rid of Facebook altogether as a lead generation source for our business. We're not going to get rid of Indeed altogether. We're going to use it when we need to. Um, but for the most part, you have to look at it as a numbers game. Like Indeed is a numbers game, just like Facebook ads are a numbers game. It's this, you have to churn through a bunch of people to get the right person from that source. So think about that when you're looking at your sources. Um, but if we look at my team right now, which arguably is the best team that I've had um, up to this point, it's a mixed bag. But when we look at it, we have one person from Indeed who was just a diamond in the rough that we had found who manages our full morning stuff. My administrative assistant was a member, used to be a member. Um, my evening trainer used to be a member. Uh, my manager applied for an internship at my facility and then became an employee for my internship. And then we have some amazing interns right now that are, are great for, for hiring, I think are great hire, hireable candidates. So when we look at it, and one of my other guys is, is Indeed, and one of my other guys is, uh, is also a member, he used to be a member. So half my team are members, and then I have internship and, and Indeed, right? So half my team were, used to be members. So we look at that and, and Anthony said the same thing, you know, we look in our member base for these people. So we find that the best ways to find that rockstar employee that doesn't want to take a break every two hours and gets burnt out and, and isn't a fit, the best people, the best places to find the best employees, the A players is going to be your member base and an internship that you set up in your facility. Those are going to be better places to get higher quality candidates that are going to stay with you longer, align with the vision, understand the system, and come with batteries included, as, as Anthony said, right? The biggest change that Apple made to the iPhone was that when it comes to you in the box, it's charged. And uh, that's a great feeling when you open the box and your phone's already working. You don't want to have to open the box, set it up, da, 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 all this stuff which you have to do with employees from Indeed more often than not, and you have to do with employees that you find from other sources. So member base and internship are the places where you find A players for the most part. Well, I know this isn't an episode on internship, but I think you do internship really well. Can you give us like a helicopter overview of your internship process and where you're getting these people from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, initially our internship kind of came out of no effort of my own. Um, so initially it started with, I had some connections with some professors in the area that uh, I had taken some courses from when I was in college. So it really benefits you to go to college and be in, the, in a similar town or, or a town that's close to the town you went to college in because you know those professors and those advisors already. It's a no like, and trust that you've already built over the couple of years of, of going to school uh, at that university. But the the first intern that I had really kind of fell in my lap and she ended up becoming the manager of my facility actually now. Um, but she kind of fell in my lap because I had a connection with an anatomy professor at a university near my facility. And I did some seminars, had him come to some seminars uh, at my facility where we had some different presenters coming in about continuing education stuff. We hosted some of those things and and people take note of that, like higher education folks take note of that when you do continuing education events at your facility. So that's one thing that can kind of get your foot in the door internship wise. Now, how our internship looks is my manager actually has, has college connections as well. So she presents at uh, a couple of different um, universities and community colleges a year. So it's maybe three to four times a year she's gonna present at these universities about how her position is at the facility, her experience in, in the strength conditioning world, because she was actually a college strength conditioning coach before she started working for me. So she kind of shares with all these, you know, college strength conditioning hopefuls that maybe it's not the best place to be career-wise and that we have an internship available and what her position looks like at the facility. And then we get applications for the internship from those talks. Those talks end up, they, they apply. When they apply, then we say, okay, we need 
a resume and you need to build a program for this specific case study. So we have two different case studies, um, an older, injured, overweight male and a youth athlete because those that identifies two different populations that we serve. They write a, um, you know, you're a trainer on this, you probably understand what I'm about to say, but they write a um, like basic like adaptation phase cycle for this individual. So they run, they write a block of adaptation based training right? Endurance-based training. So they write this block, uh, submit it, and then record a couple of videos of them performing and coaching certain movement patterns. And that's how we compare interns against each other to see who's going to actually get the internship. Uh, and it's more about them following directions than it is about them doing well with the, um, the actual process. So as long as they follow the directions, then we know that they're going to be probably a relatively good fit because they can follow directions and, and meet deadlines. And then we invite them in, set them up with a schedule, uh, minimum of 15 hours a week on the internship. The internship is a minimum of eight weeks. Sometimes they need more uh, hours for their college credit. So we'll expand it, but minimum 15 hours. Once they get into the facility, they will have a lecture once a week with me or with my manager for an hour. And they will shadow for about three weeks and then start actually coaching individuals on the floor so we can see how they perform. And if we have opportunities available for them to come on staff, um, we offer that to them. And after their internship's over, we actually start utilizing them as part of the staff kind of toward the tail end uh, and then let them run the floor by themselves. And uh, that's the long and short of it, man, uh, for our internship program. Yeah, awesome. I put it on our schedule of things to do. We're going to do a full breakdown of an internship, how you can set one up and teach you guys how to do it step by step. Because an internship is very, very important for the reasons that Jimmy said, but it also for the reason that you're going to get good quality employees. Mm -hmm. Good quality employees mean more freedom and more profit for you. How, right? How does that work? Well, good employees will give you freedom because they're handling everything. They're handling your business if you delegate and teach them correctly. And they're going to give you more profits because they're going to, you're going to be able to hold on to members for a lot longer. The goal of business is to be able to grow profits. The way you grow profits is by having things like this and investing in your staff that's going to invest in the clients. If you take care of your staff, they're going to take care of your clients. All right, guys. Until next time, Anthony and Jimmy, Fitness Profit Multiplier, we are out.